Hello everyone and welcome back to another update video. Today I'm going to be taking you through Amped Replay's update 22229. You will see that with this update, the main core of the update is focusing around the frames per second of video and being able to automatically adjust that for our users based on accurate information contained within the file. So we're going to have a quick look at how Replay will automatically adjust these frames per second in your video for you. We'll talk about what information it's using and how it comes to the conclusion, what the accurate frames per second is. And also I will show you how that's now shown in the report. When working with proprietary formats, it's quite common to find conflicting information inside the file about the correct playback speed of the video. For example, the file container may declare speed, but frame-based metadata could tell something different, like in this video I'm going to show you. When this is the case, Replay detects and reports the conflict and automatically adjusts the playback speed. In the case of this video, the decision is based on presentation timestamp. So if we take a look at the file information for this video, you can see that the file frames per second for this video is saved at 20 sec 26 frames per second. Now this will probably be down to the container information saying that this video should be played at 26 frames per second. However, you can see that the playback frame per second has been adjusted to 15.1750. And in here, we're being told that the FPS was adjusted based on the presentation timestamps, the PTS information. This is one of two ways that the frames per second may be adjusted in your video. The reason this has been changed due to the PTS and how this works is the PTS is the timing that the video frames were encoded in milliseconds. And using these numbers from the PTS, from the file information, an accurate playback frames per second can be calculated. And this is what has been used for this video. If we play this video, we can see that by automatically adjusting the frames per second to 15, we're gonna get a more uh, accurate playback speed. One of the other things that we've added into replay in this update is that if we adjust the frames per second to review the footage, you can see that our playback frames per second turns red. And this is just to let you know that you have adjusted the frames per second, because if you adjust the frames per second here and then export the video, it will be exported with this adjusted frame per second. What we can do here is I can change this to 26 frames per second, which is what the file frames per second was saved at. And if I play this back now, you can see that it's moving too fast. So we can see from this example that the playback frames per second has been adjusted automatically for you and to a much more accurate playback speed. So I said there was two ways that this may happen. In this case, it was the PTS information that gave us the accurate frames per second. In this next video, I show you the decision is going to be based on time metadata. So in this next sample that I load, you'll see that instead of it being from the PTS information, this time we've got the FPS adjusted based on the available timestamps file and the original container which is the avi container by default saves the frames per second of videos as 25 frames per second but in this case by taking a look at the timestamp that was included in this video we can calculate that a much more accurate playback frames per second would be 30 frames per second so in this case again this video has been automatically adjusted for you you'll be able to see that in the file information and this adjustment is reported in the user interface and in the report. 
Okay, finally then, let's take a look at how this information is shown in the report. So if we go to the export tab and we generate a report for this, we can see that that file information of our file is shown in our report at the start. And within the file information, we've got that information about the FPS being adjusted on available timestamps. Further in the report, if the user makes a manual adjustment of the frames per second, it will be shown here as well. We've also made a few updates to the annotate tab. We've added a way to overwrite tracking information. And we've also added the customization of timestamps. Our annotate tracking methods have been a great success, but the way that replay works with the tracking in the annotate tab can sometimes cause a little uh, issue when we're moving our annotations around. So we've introduced this checkbox here that will allow you to set the position for all the active frames. And this will help you in scenarios where you've created an annotate in a set location and you need to move it for the full video. But before it was quite difficult to do this. And I'll give you a, an example of what I mean. So let's say I created a logo on my video and I set this for all the frames. As I do more to the video, let's say actually I want this logo now in the top left. So I move it to the top left. Now what has happened because of how the tracking works in annotate, this has acted as if I've just moved it for this single frame. So if I go back, you'll see it just moves on that single frame. And if I were to right click this and set for all frames, it wouldn't change and overwrite all that tracking information. So we've made this set position for all active frames checkbox for you. So that if you select this, on whatever frame you're on, now all the other frames will follow. So this just makes it very quick and easy to move your annotations around your video. In this update, we've also made it possible so that you can change the format of your timestamps. So if I go to text and in my text here, I create a timestamp so if I've got my timestamp here I may want to change the format or the layout of how this is shown and I can do that by going to the options menu and in here you can see we've got the date format and the time format so if I want it to be very British I can go Damien Fier and then our minutes seconds. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and excited to see these new features within your versions of replay. Don't forget to update and I'll see you next time.